right. Good morning. Good morning, uh, everyone. Um, hope you guys had a great week. Uh, we have been praying for you. Um, and can you guys believe it? It's been uh, almost a year since the pandemic. And, you know, for me, uh, with my three kids doing distance learning from home, uh, I realized I really need patience, joy, and peace. And those are all from the fruit of the spirit. And also, our team has been praying for you, for all of you, uh, even during this time that we can be creative in ways that we can share our testimony to others and also uh, make disciples uh, in this very important time that we're in. Therefore, I think it's going to be a real treat for us. We have a amazing uh, speaker that will be sharing how to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, let me introduce you our speaker for today. Uh, her name is Dina Martinez. And you know, when I think of Dina, I, I think of like two, two people coming to mind, um, Wonder Woman and Mulan, because they're both like beautiful, yet they're like warriors, you know? And Dina is such a warrior for the kingdom of God. She's a warrior of the gospel uh, for the city. And she is actually our team leader for Crew Inner City. Also, she's a team leader for Destino. And she has been serving as a staff for 10 years. Uh, her parents came from El Salvador uh, during the, the Civil War to, to Los Angeles. Uh, and she has been uh, living and uh, walking uh, in the spirit, in the city. Uh, uh, and she has been really serving the Lord, making disciples and um, just loving on people and proclaiming the gospel. So it's such a, it's been a, such a privilege to get to know Dina and serve uh, with her and also ha like having her lead our team. It's been such a blessing for me and I have learned so much. Uh, and yeah, she's a wonder woman. She does so much, but she does it with joy. She does it with, with the effectiveness. She does it with, and I believe it's all, you know, from the power of the Holy Spirit. She really, really living out what, what, what it means to walk in the spirit. So we want to welcome Dina here today. Uh, let me uh, pray for Dina real quick, and then we'll get started, okay? Father, we thank you for giving us this beautiful morning. We come before you with just Desire, Lord, uh, to hear from you. Holy Spirit, we ask of you to empower each and every one of us so that we can be your witness, so that we can live out, Lord, the Christ in us, so that we can experience the fruit of the Spirit, especially the, during this time of COVID, where uh, our tensions are heightened, that we will experience patience, joy, and peace, and power to do your will. Bless Dina, anoint her, Lord, and may you speak through her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everybody. How's it going? <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to ask questions first. And so it's kind of hard to be interactive in Zoom. So bear with me. I have done this thing called poll everywhere so some of the staff know how to do this already but if you're new you click on this link here and oh i see paul is coming in um and essentially we can see the question it's a way to ask questions and see and for you guys to submit your answer um so the i'm going to share the screen with you guys wait a second oh i needed to activate it first i think it should be active now there you go. And now I can share the screen with you guys. So the question that I have for you guys as we come in today is share one to three words to describe how you're feeling um, coming in today. Comparte una tres palabras que describen cómo te sientes. I think Bonsk is doing that actually, sorry. <laughs> and so um, you would write this. Yep, I, I think people are figuring it out. 
so I see and here's the link if you need it again for the people that are coming in right now. Um, so I see sleepy, great, despierta or awake, excited, um, think, think thoughtful, pensando, uh, tired, happy, okay-ish, scattered, that's a Cool. Cool. Um, be joyful. Okay. okay. Somebody just wrote okay. Interested. Content. A lot of people are excited and tired. So the bigger words are the ones that people are writing multiple times. Just so people can be aware of that. Which is really cool just to see. Oh, and scattered and hopeful. It's like this mix of things going back and forth of how people are feeling. Uh, yes. Cool. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna change this to our next question. Okay, the next question is, okay. You go. What three words would you use to describe your Christian life during the past month? Uh, escribe tres palabras que describen tu vida en Cristo durante estos tres meses. So this one's a little bit, uh, maybe it feels a little deeper. Uh, thank you if you're coming in late. Struggle, yeah. Enforcing, difficult, struggle, evangelize, uh, joyful, believe, numb, difficult. Yeah. I see struggle for sure is something most people are saying and trust. Yeah, I see challenged, learning, convicted, uh, lament, oh, is it? No, learning, uh, desiring, engaged, seeking, intentional, uh, hopeful, growth, um, yeah. I think those are like the main ones. It's so funny. Um, struggle, trust, and convicted. And it doesn't that feel like that in this pandemic? It's like you're going back and forth between feeling convicted, you're trusting God, and then there's a struggle in there somewhere too. To. Um, I feel like that's so accurate. I'm going to stop sharing this, but um, of how um, our walks with God really can be and really are it is a struggle um i think for me i feel you guys on that um i think for me that's even in the midst of a lot of hard things that are happening it's um it can be, feel like overwhelming um, and difficult to continue to trust god um and i just want to say that i'm with you on that and i um uh I want to affirm that. And yet, um, I think I also want to encourage us today um, to spend some time in God's word um, together, processing through what it could look like to, to drink from God this morning. And so we're gonna walk through um, an exercise together. Uh, more than talking about the Holy Spirit, because I think we can talk about it and we can get very philosophical with it too. I want us to spend some time actually processing through that and trying to um, invite the Holy Spirit and spending time um, together in that. Um, yeah, so I wanted us, you can look at the outline if you want, but I'll be sharing the verses here on the chat too. Would anybody uh, volunteer to read um, the verse 
John, so we're gonna be looking at John 7, 37 through 39. Okay, but before I start, um, if everybody could grab, go grab a piece of paper if you don't have one, because you'll need it at some point, or a journal, like where you normally would journal, because you will be reflecting at some point and having conversation at some point. So, um, and you'll be getting into small groups a lot. Um, you'll be going back and forth in that. So, um, which Nate, I, guess, I, didn't, I don't know if I, I didn't give you the warning, but um, if you could set that up, that would be great at some point. We're gonna process right now this, but, um, but I just wanna give you guys, I'm gonna give you guys a minute to be able to do that. So like, go grab a paper, or maybe you don't need a paper. Maybe you can do it on the computer and then you can just do notes like I do sometimes um but yeah just that way you can because we're actually going to spend some time reflecting in that together and so um yeah go do that i don't really see people moving because i can't see you guys but i'm pretending that you guys are running through your house trying to find something and scattering and be like oh yes i found it my journal is here so mine is kept Pretty, pretty easy access for me. So grab one of these. Okay, cool. Um, thank you. Some people have messaged me that they have it already. So that's good. So I'm going to start. Would anybody want to volunteer to read the, the passage that is on the chat? I can read it. Cool. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. John goes on to tell us by this he meant the spirit. John 7, 37 through 39. Thank you for reading that. Now this might feel like a familiar passage to a lot of us and so um yeah and so i think we want to be able to spend some time reflecting on this today but also realizing that even when we're thirsty like you're saying it, the struggle like i just want to say the struggle is real because that's the word that keeps on popping up the most um we can trust god that when we're thirsty we can go to him and he will all, like open up our hearts to be able to experience a living water um, which is the Holy Spirit um, in, in us. So I want you guys to get in groups of three or four um, and use short sentence prayers. Right now you're gonna get into groups or Nate's gonna get you guys into group and um, to say thank you to God for any specific, for, for many specific things that God has given us in Christ. Um, that the spirit has helped you to understand and experience. So be specific. So an example would be like, thank you, Lord, um, for enabling me to know and experience you and love, um, your love shed abroad in my heart. Okay. Um, now we're gonna spend some time in reflection and so hopefully you have a piece of paper or even um, spending some time um, silently meditating. Um, <clears throat> and in this part, what we're gonna do is now that we thank God, we're gonna spend some time in silent confession. So um, I am gonna read First um, John 1, 9 and it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so um, now we're going to spend some time even with God, um, to, not together, but like together, but separate at the same time. <laughs> um, and so I take a, I'll give it like three or four minutes to write out, um, yeah, in this week or in this month, one thing that you would want to confess to God or that where you'd want to surrender to God in this um, time. And then we'll come back again in the in three minutes. 
I'm going to pray for us. Uh, God, I just thank you, Lord, that um, you hear our, our cry, Lord, that uh, we can open up our hearts to you, Lord, and that you can um, be present. You can be compassionate, Lord. It says that you're a comp compassionate and loving God. Um, so, Lord, we just confess to you that we aren't perfect, Lord, and you know that already about us, Lord. Uh, we confess um, even just the hard the hardness that it is to engage, Lord. Um, yeah. And so I just pray right now, Lord, that even as we um, trust in you, Lord, that you would hear our cry, Lord, that you would see where people are at um, in their struggle. And um, yeah, would you cleanse us, Lord? It says that we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Lord. Um, I pray that we would be able to experience that even right now, Lord, and that you would um, allow us to be able to um, even just like surrender our imperfections to you, Lord, that we would be able to um, give our burdens to you and that you would make a, our burden light, God. Uh, we love you, God, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Um, now we're going to go back into our groups. And the question to discuss is when you first, when did you first hear about the Holy Spirit and how did you, how did you first learn to walk in the spirit? So when did you hear about it first? What was your experience like when you thought about the Holy Spirit? Um, I know for me, mine was, was, has been a long journey in understanding what the Holy Spirit was. Um, and so I want us to spend some time discussing that and hearing each other's stories. Um, and then I'll come back and I can share mine on when we come back. <laughs> so when I first learned about the Holy Spirit, um, I, well, I grew up in a Pentecostal ho like household. So um, similar to Jose, it was like speaking tongues was, or um, if you don't like, you know, fall to the ground, like then you haven't experienced the Holy Spirit. And I actually used to get scared because I just never experienced that in my church. I never like, you know, I never felt like I never felt like I never felt the Holy Spirit, I guess. Um, but in college, somebody shared with me about um, what does it look like to be satisfied and the idea of empowering and empowerment um, to be able to have the ability and the action to, to, to step into God's power. Um, and I think for me, what changed was that knowing that it's something that I have to ask for God daily and that, um, and I, even the exercise of confessing my sin and then surrendering that to God and then asking God, Hey God, would you help me today to, um, to, to do X, Y, and Z, whether it's to, to get through something painful to, um, for me in college, it was even the, the uh, missing my family and then feeling like um, I wasn't good enough to be like, why am I in this co in this college here right now? Um, you know, born in a in the hood, it's hard to be in the in these settings where things are so different. And so I would every time when I would wake up for even for tests, I would pray, God, would you help me um, have the courage to to take these tests or to um, would you help me to um, you know, experience joy and get to work today. Um, would you help me like, would you be present with me right now as I um, take these, um, hang out with friends or take tests and stuff like that. School and education was my biggest, like um, I would say my biggest uh, struggle was trying to get um, good grades. I always would get anxious about it. And so I would pray to God that he would help me have peace in those moments and I think experiencing that and seeing that for myself was um healing for me and that I didn't I, I would see the difference that I didn't that I could ask God for peace and then I would experience peace that I could ask God for joy and even if the circumstances and changing but being able to know that God is with me and that um really ch shift things around um Rebecca I see do you have your hand up Rebecca Okay, yeah, you want to share something? Yes, I just would like to share something, you know, because uh, the, the questions like this, where did we first hear the Holy Spirit? 
uh, I, as I shared a while ago with my with my with my breakout session group, it's uh, way back already in the in 1982 actually, and this is ages ago. And then and it's so you, it says how do you learn how to walk in the Holy Spirit. You know, there's so something because I uh, I've learned the, the the two subjects in the Bible school about the Holy Spirit, and then another one is that the subject on life and the Holy Spirit. So we've got to know who the Holy Spirit is. Of course, all of us know that He's a third person in the Holy Trinity. And, and, and his role, and his role, that's why we, Jesus Christ, of course, uh, before he, he said, he, he commanded the, the, our, our text, our verse in Matthew 28, uh, commanding the, the disciples to, 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 uh, to make disciples of all nations. But then uh, uh, before that, when he was still in the last, in the last days of his life, he, he I told, I told us the, the apostles that I, I will send the, you the, the gift of the Father, now, also, anyway, that's because we need that, because Jesus Christ is no longer with us in the present. That's why I, I learned that also in my life, also that we, we are still, we are still, we are not perfect. We are being perfected by the Lord, and we still have mistakes and failures along the way. Uh, until we see him face to face, we're, not, we're still all under construction. But Jesus Christ is no longer with us, and so he sent the Holy Spirit. His role is always to be by our side, to guide us, to warn us, to remind us, to convict us, and so on and so forth. But, uh, but, he, but he said that uh, make disciples, but we need empowering. That's why the baptism of the Holy Spirit is primarily for for empowering to win souls. Mm -hmm. That is, the, but because Apostle Paul is more on, on the feeling and refilling and feeling of the Holy Spirit, because it is for our, for our empowerment to, for transformation. Mm -hmm. but, but we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit for, mm -hmm. for the witnessing and evangelizing and discipling, because it is to, to follow Jesus Christ empowerment to uh, just like in Luke chapter two over there. And we know that, but uh, that's why we need both the, the fruits and the gifts. And the fruits is when the Holy Spirit is doing the work of transformation in our lives. And, and it depends on us how, how we cooperate and how we partner with God, because we go through a lot of, of, uh, of and, and the Lord allow, allow those things to happen to our lives and so many trials. And I've gone through a lot in my life, but then the, the Holy Spirit's always there to help us along the way. Always, I call him body friend. <laughs> my, my, body, my body friend, Holy Spirit, because he's always there. And, and just to remind us and, and just to lift us up and encourage us. and. He convicts us, but he always, at the same time, he always encourages us. And all along the way, so many circumstances, and you're like, oh God, here I am in crying again, and I did all, 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 my, all my inconsistencies and all my, my, my incapacities and all my everything of failures. Oh God, but you see, always there. That's why the infilling and feeling as all the pistols of the Pastor Paul. But the baptism is primarily for soul winning, to witness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you for God. sharing that. That's super helpful. And actually, that's a, a good transition into the next part that I want to process. I think all of us kind of understand that, like even the idea that we need the Holy Spirit every day to fill mm -hmm. us and, mm -hmm. um, and that we can choose to enter into that at any point in time. So I, yeah. we're actually going to apply that in real time right now, yeah. as I want us to think about what are some challenges that you're currently facing right now in real time? <laughs> and what do you need to experience the most at this time? So we think about the, the, the joy, the fruits of the spirits in Galatians yeah. 5, 22, 23, where it says, yeah. um, but the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, right? Those are the fruits that God is inviting us every day to experience. So I want you to think about that in real time right now. Think about a thing that right now you're, it's challenging for you. And as you become more and more aware of those areas um, and when we fall in, sh well, I'll, I'll put this in the chat right here. Oh, wrong, wrong click. But remember it is the role of the spirit to produce this in our lives. So we're gonna spend some time in your small group praying praying for these things and claiming the fruit of the spirit you seek, um, such as a love for a specific relationship, joy for a specific trial. As you become aware more of these areas where your attitude and responses have fallen short and have been 
uh, displeasing to God, breathe spiritually. So it says it's like confessing our sin is kind of like the example of exhaling and then inhaling or expressing our dependence upon the spirit. So in your small groups, you're going to, have, uh, you, you begin to think about one thing. So you will share it in your small group. Okay. Where you can share one trial that you're, or like one thing that's hard this right now. And then also then praying together or, or exclaiming what, what you would want God to the spirit to meet you there. Does that make sense? I hope that's it. So hopefully it feels practical to you. And in case you need it, here is Galatians, um, the fruits of the spirit, things that you can claim from God, or like you can ask God, Hey God, you know, I'm struggling, feeling joyful right now in this moment. And then asking God for that. So um, I'm going to open up this space for people if they want to share um, what their experience was like with the small groups. Um, yeah, what was one thing you learned about each other or uh, people in your group? And then, um, yeah, how was the experience like? Eric, would you like to share? Would you, I want to invite you to share. Would you want to share, Eric? Um, sure. Um, uh, I don't know. I think I just, one, I enjoyed sharing um, with the people who were in my group. Um, I kind of just shared with them what, you know, what I was going through, a lot of personal struggles. Um, and how like even coming to this discipleship class on a Saturday morning <laughs> is a little bit of a struggle. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, I really appreciated uh, what Chan said to me. Um, he he kind of just mentioned, he's like, yeah, he, he talked about the book of Psalms and how David, how he like gets angry and frustrated with God. And he, um, I mean, he yells at him. He like legit like yells and screams at him. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because you know we would think like, you know, don't don't do that to God or don't you know <laughs> don't say those things. Or, but he's a God who can handle that. He's a God who can take that. Um, and so it, um, yeah, it's just encouraging. You know, it was encouraging. So it was a short time, but it was an encouraging time. Thanks for sharing, Eric. Yeah. Anybody else want to share? I like what you said, Eric, about um, how sometimes we don't think God can handle our emotions, and yet um, the psalmist says that very frequently in the, in the text, in the Bible. And he's a very compassionate and gracious God, even to um, invite us in to come as we are with all of our um, emotions to God and be, and be able to ask him for, um, for his spirit in the end still is amazing. Um, that he knows that what we need and he gives it to us. <clears throat> Anybody else want to share? Anita? <laughs> sí. uh, <clears throat> All right, there you go. <laughs> um, for me, is like I was saying to the group, since I'm very extrovert and I need to be around people, it's not enough for me to see you through the computer. Mm -hmm. It's not enough for me to talk to them on the phone. Mm -hmm. so there's some times when I feel kind of very depressed mm -hmm. at least for a few minutes you know and 
um, when I start feeling like that, what I have to do is uh, uh, go to my, sometimes I go to my car, sometimes I just stay here in the room and I start praying. Mm -hmm. Because I, I go to my car and I turn on the, the radio, you know, to my uh, Alex Campos or Danilo Montero station <laughs> and raise it all the way up. And then I can start, you know, praising God. And and then he comes and, and hugs me. Mm -hmm. So so then I'm kind of renew, and then I can continue for a few days <laughs> again. Like you guys said, you, you have to fill up your tank, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, <clears throat> for me, this tank uh, has to be filled every day because I mean, I am very. Um, outgoing person and since I'm not going anywhere I'm not wasting my gasoline in anything <laughs> so it is uh, uh, it, that's that's the struggle I have mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 the good thing is that even though that's the struggle I'm having is the way that God more responded to me more faster more caring more loving more like physically instantly mm -hmm. so uh, his presence is, is is awesome when because when i feel down he lifts me up mm -hmm. and that's that's amazing that's that's the amazing thing mm -hmm. that i've been experiencing in all this pandemic yeah. <clears throat> thanks for sharing anita i resonate with your story Anybody else want to share? Well, here's a question to you guys. If we have access to the spirit um, and we can just pray to God, like we just spend some minutes doing that right now. Why do you think a lot of Christians don't experience the, the spirit often? I can speak for myself a little bit, but I just, like a lot of the times, like I know what Jesus wants me to do and I don't want to do it. And so I don't listen to him because I know what he's going to say. And it's like, it's, it's, it's just really easy to, to be like, I, I'll do that later. I'll like pay attention to him later. And then I get in the habit of that and just don't go through the spirit very often um and i don't think it's worth it at the end of the day but like so focused on the moment and what i want to do in the moment that i don't listen so yeah thanks for being honest and sharing um okay, yeah, i appreciate it Anybody else have thoughts in terms of why you think Christians struggle to experience the Holy Spirit sometimes? I think like you said, we're very forgetful people and we need to really be mindful of Christ being there at all times mm -hmm. and just choosing to live out a life of faith and just obedience. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else? Okay. Esto se en español porque en inglés, I don't think, no creo que van a salir las palabras como son. Can you share this in Spanish because she's saying that the words are going to be really hard to share in English. Um, yo pienso que no oramos al Señor por el Espíritu Santo. I think we don't pray for the Holy Spirit to come into our lives often. Una, dos, por dos razones. Una por ignorancia. One for ignorance. Y la otra por no, porque no queremos ser responsables. Two, because we don't want to be responsible to what God. To lo que Dios nos quiere a, a mandar que, hace, que hagamos. To what God might be calling us to do. So, mm -hmm. so esas son las dos razones que 
preferimos dejar a Dios sentado allá y yo puedo lidiar con mi problema. We would rather leave God sitting over there and I can handle my own problem here. Yeah. That's very honest, Anita. That's pretty accurate. Eso tenía yeah. que ser en español. <laughs> but that, she said, but I had to say that in Spanish because it was, she was saying, I'm sharing, she's sharing from her heart. <laughs> Yeah, that's very true. And I think I think even all of us here, we're all believers. We all have, we're here trying to learn about how to continue to walk with God and to help other people walk with God. Like we are leaders trying to help other people as well. And so um, Anita just hit it on the right, straight to the point. It's sometimes it's out of ignorance, people just don't know what that means. You know, they're new believers. And I think sometimes we expect them to already have known what it would look like to be filled with the spirit as soon as they came to Christ. Um, and sometimes you need to help people walk through that day. Hey, I know you experienced that high when you first prayed to receive Christ, but we need to do this. Like, you know, we need to pray for God's empowerment every day or um, to, to be able to have that courage. And so I wanted to share with you guys this tool. And I actually still use this tool, even though I've been um, on staff and walking with God for a while now. Um, but it's a good exercise to help people, very basic steps to help them see like, hey, if you're feeling these, this way, where you're feeling discouraged in your walk with God, um, we can still like choose to move towards walking in the power of the spirit every day. And so I wanted to share with you guys with that, but I also want to challenge you guys um, to encourage the people around you as you experience the Holy Spirit. Um, what would it look like for, for you guys to share with people around you um, who is feeling, somebody who might be feeling discouraged? And it's pretty common right now for people to feel discouraged, to feel like um, they want to quit in you know their relationship with God or like they don't want they've been ignoring God like how you've been saying they put him to the side right and then um, God might be wanting them to to do something but they don't want to and they need people we need each other it says that we need community like we spur each other on we encourage each other as community so this is me encouraging you guys and you guys are encouraging me even as I hear your stories and I see your response right now he encourages me to continue going. So what would it look like for us to do the same for others, people? And it's so crazy because as you see other people be encouraged, you yourself find that you are encouraged in God. And as we talk to each other, we are able to experience God together. Um, and I see that with me and my sister, Blanca. I know she's been quiet on this <laughs> chat, but um, sometimes we we're we're doing and we're helping with the kids and doing all this stuff and cooking and um, when we start talking with each other and we start sharing with each other, hey, I'm I'm struggling with this or I don't feel good about this, we can talk to each other and spur each other on and then remind each other of well what what God what God could be doing in our lives and what would it look like for us to pray together to experience joy to experience peace to experience God's, um, you know, self-control, a goodness, a sense of compassion for others, and experience God's presence through that person's life. And so I want us to have the courage to try to do that this week with somebody. Um, does that make sense? So here's a tool that you can do. It's also on God tools. It's called the Satisfy Booklet. So I know that you guys had already been, um, have been asked to download that before. Um, it looks like this little icon right here. Can you see it, the God tools? And there you go, like this. So in there, you can see the different ones and it's at the bottom, it looks like that. So you can use the tool on your phone or you can use the, the actual PDF. But if you want an actual copy of the booklet, or you can just ask these questions that we did right now to somebody else. Um, if you want an actual physical copy, you can um, reply to the email that we send out this week and we will send you, Young will send you an actual copy, like a paper copy, if you want one. Um, so yeah. 
I hope this was helpful and encouraging to you guys. And um, I hope that it can help you to know that God's only a, uh, a prayer away. Stop me.